This is how power line stress and insufficient safety checks led to rolling blackouts throughout eight states of northeastern America and several provinces of Canada. I'm Aiden Becker, and this happened on August 14, 2003. My birthday happens to be August 14, so this relates to me in a way, I guess. So, the first cause of the event was essentially a software glitch. Uh, several wires had been outdated and it was hot out, so when they sagged into some trees and broke, it, no alarms went off in the control buildings. I found a quotation from James Barron of the New York Times the day after the incident, saying, the widespread failures provoked the evacuation of office buildings, stranded thousands of commuters, and flooded some hospitals with patients suffering in the stifling heat. It was almost 100 degrees that day in some states, but that, that's hot enough to cause significant discomfort and, in some cases, heat stress. So, I found a report the North American Electric Reliability Company did on the event uh, almost a year after, or they released it almost a year after, and they said that at the time of the event, if the alarm had gone off, there were almost 800 contingency plans that could have sufficiently dealt with the issue. Some statistics for this. So, the peak load the year before, just showing that the wires, the cables, should have been up to snuff, so to say, enough to deal with it. So, in August 2002, the year before, the peak load was 13,000 megawatts. In August 2003, the peak load was almost 12,000 megawatts. The temperature uh, immediately before the incident was around 78 degrees Fahrenheit. And during and after the incident, it skyrocketed up to 87 degrees Fahrenheit. This is in a period of about uh, two, three hours. So the load on the cable, or the load out of the plant at the time, was around 10 to 12,000 megawatts. Or no, it wasn't 10 to 12,000. It was 10,000 originally, and it skyrocketed up 20 percent in an hour to 12,000 megawatts as the temperature increased. The cable was supposedly at 44% capacity, and because of this and the alarm failures, this led to 55 million people without power for several days. So the story. As temperatures skyrocketed, more people, want, more people turned on their AC, causing a higher energy usage, and this caused stress on the cables leaving the facility. Uh, these cables then sagged into trees, causing them to break. So the first thing that happened is one cable sagged into a tree. It wasn't it wasn't quite up to its rating, and that one cable sagged into a tree and broke. A second cable then forced to carry a higher load due to the first one breaking, was then then sagged into yet more trees. So more more power lines fell, even more power lines fell. And because of a software error the day before, which they thought they had fixed, uh, no alarms went off. So they were, all they saw was that their power was, they weren't exporting as much power as they had been earlier. But alarms didn't go off, so they thought everything was fine, they just needed a little bit more power coming out. This caused a cascading power failure across the entire country.